of God and of the Lamb of God shall be in it and his servants shall serve him. So that speaks of the time when there will be no more tears, where there will be no more sickness, where there is going to be no more demons, demon possession. And the Bible says there will be no more curse. So that means up to that point, even as Christians, we are still could be battling with curses, with demonic oppressions, with demonic torments. And so that time is not now. The Revelation 22 is not happening yet. So we are still battling with that. So for those people who walk around and say, well, this stuff doesn't exist anymore. You know, you're just making things up. You're just borrowing things from Hollywood. Are you kidding me? Because the Bible talks about it over 200 times that there are curses. Jesus died so He can take away the curse of the law. And the scripture says in Revelation 22 is that there will be a time where there will be no more curse. And my friend, that time is not right now, but that time is coming. And through the blood of Jesus, through renouncing, through spiritual warfare, we can actually break the curses over our life, over our family, and over our family tree. I had this situation that happened to me um, in our previous house where one of the persons that lived in the house with us left a window in the house open. Now, I am very, uh, I have this pet peeve and one of them is to make sure all the doors and windows are locked, not just closed, locked. And so, and this particular person did not lock the window. They closed the window, didn't lock the window. And so we had a little meeting in the park. I was preaching and I come back from the park preaching and as I walk into my house, I hear the wind in the living room. So the first thought that came into my mind, oh my God, this is Pentecost version 2. The wind is in the room. My God, something is about to happen. And uh, my uh, deep revelation was short-lived because I realized that one of the doors is open. The window is open to the outside. And I see all the stuff is tossed and turned over everywhere in our house. And I realized someone just entered into our house. Now, I didn't see the thief. I just knew because the window was open, someone actually went through our house. Then it dawned on me, the car is missing. Yeah, the car was missing. Now, it wasn't my car. I borrowed it from my cousin and the car was old, but still, the car was gone. The thief didn't take nothing but the car. Now, thankfully, Later on that night, the car was found. The, the thief left a note on the car dashboard that says, sorry for stealing your car. Now, I'm going to tell you something. That when you have an open door in your life, the thief, the Bible describes Satan as a, somebody who comes to kill, steal and destroy. Satan, as a thief, does not need to live in your house. He just needs you through your negligence, through maybe being intentional, being not careful, open the door or the window of your life and He begins to come in and through curses, through demonic oppression, He begins to leave His fingerprints on your life. You may say, what are the fingerprints of the thief? Something begins to miss. When something is missing, one of the reasons I knew the thief was in my house is because something was missing. A big car was missing. So when a Christian goes through their life and they're like, man, something is missing. I have a peace that's missing. I have the prosperity that's missing. I have health that's missing. I have relationships. Something is missing in my life. A lot of times, my friend, if something is missing in your life, there might be a thief. There might be an open door. There might be a, a demonic curse that is taking things out of your life. Now the difference between something missing and something lost is that when you lose your keys, okay, you didn't have a thief, you just were not careful. There was negligence on your part and you just have to remember, retrace your steps and as you retrace your steps, something, something begins to happen. You find what was lost. You can lose your first love. You can lose certain things but what I'm talking about today is not losing. I'm talking about something being taken from you. I'm talking about something being stolen from you. If you feel like something is missing in your life right now, my goal is not to 
highlight and glorify the devil but our goal is to disclose his tactics and to bring shame to his kingdom go ahead and drop that in the comment right now if you're saying you know what hey i'm realizing something is missing in my life something is missing in my life and i need to find that thief and that thief needs to restore things in my life in jesus name if you are ready for that go ahead and drop that spam that comment right now drop that one or drop that emoji right now and simply say you know what the devil's time has expired in my life the devil's time has come to an end because jesus christ today through his word is gonna catch the thief and god's gonna restore everything that the enemy has stolen come on somebody i feel like preaching and it's just beginning it's just beginning all right all right all right i see i see your comments i see your comments let's do it let's do it let's go for it i'm about to share open windows and open doors for curses there's many of them but today I'm going to share just nine of them. Before I do that, in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 27, it says, do not give place to the devil. That tells me that as a Christian, you can give place to the devil. As a believer, you can open your life to the enemy. If you couldn't open your life to the enemy, my friend, the Bible would never waste ink to tell us, do not open your life to the enemy. The Bible wouldn't tell us, do not give place to the devil. But the fact the Bible instructs us not to give place to the devil tells us that as Christians we are capable of giving place to the devil. As my friend kept the window of the door, of the, kept the window of the house open and the thief was waiting and broke into the house and stole the car. My friend, the devil is waiting for you to keep one of these nine doors or windows of your life open so he can bring the curse. Maybe something is missing today. I'm going to help you to identify what opened the door, what opened the window to the demonic influence of demonic spiritual curse in your life. And we're going to also pray. This is not just me preaching and talking. We're going to pray. We're going to break curses. We're going to close every open door and we're going to reverse every plan of the enemy that he has had over your life in Jesus' mighty name. We got 200 people on YouTube already. Come on. I love it. And then I see a lot of people already on Facebook. 170 people on Facebook sharing. Thank you guys for sharing on Facebook and sharing it to your um, groups that you are a part of. Tagging your friends right now who need to hear this and be broken free from the chains of the enemy. So, number one door that opens the door to the demonic curse in a person's life is the presence of a cult. A cult is when we worship idols. It's when we open our lives to the demonic directly. The occult is astrology, witchcraft, black arts, fortune telling, black magic, white magic, Ouija boards, spiritism, tarot cards, horoscopes, talking to the dead. A lot of these things and much more, they are open doors, direct open doors to the demons. I want you to hear what the scripture says in Deuteronomy chapter 27 verse 5. Cursed is the one who makes a carved or molded image and it's an abomination to the Lord, the work of the hands of craftsmen and sets it up in secret. So God is saying people who set up idols and who begin to worship them, they get the curse upon their life. As the previous week I mentioned that the curse can come from God Curse can, go from, curse can come from the servants of God and curse can come even from the servants of Satan. And then we can actually bring a curse upon ourselves as well. We call them self-imposed curses. And so one of the first and the main open doors for curses in our life is through going to the other side. Going to the territory of demons. What is the territory of demons? You may say, well, earth belongs to the Lord and everything thereof. Yes. But you can give place, you can get on the territory of the devil by getting engaged and involved with the things that are demonic. Reading things about witchcraft, studying Ouija boards, watching all kinds of horror films or watching all kinds of things that are demonic, writing contracts with the devil, participating in new age or false religions. Those things they open direct door to the demonic and there are people today who are, their minds are so open, their, their brains are falling out. Meaning that they're so open-minded concerning all of this stuff and they take all of that junk in and they're like, well, there's nothing wrong with that. And then these demons begin to attack and torment their life. 
when I was a teenager in the Ukraine, I've shared the story in my book Fight Back. I had a teacher, a math teacher who was also a doctor and she was helping me with math. She actually wasn't a math teacher. She was just a doctor who was really good in math and uh, math. It was not one of my strongest topics to learn. And so I would go to her to help me with math. And she had this German Shepherd, this very wild demon possessed dog because this dog had to be on the chain and this dog was constantly attacking and barking and so but, but because it was on the chain um, the dog couldn't harm me so I knew how far the chain would go and so as a teenager you know I was extremely bold and you know why I was bold is because I knew the limits of the dog's influence now the dog barked at everyone he only could bite someone who would step on the territory that the chain he was on permitted so I knew that like I wasn't a theologically sound and like in dogs but I knew enough the dog couldn't reach this area so what I would do is that <laughs> I would come as close as I can to where the dog would go and where his chain would hold him and I'd go <sighs> and I would provoke him then when nobody would be watching, I would take you like small stones and I'll throw it at him because I wanted to provoke the dog. I wanted to see his like wild teeth. I wanted to see his like angry. And because I knew the dog couldn't do anything except bark at me. Why? Because it he was on the chain. Except one day um, I came to the teacher with my math and I've noticed that the dog wasn't there. And so there was a dog's little house that like the dog where the dog was chained to and uh, the dog wasn't there. So what I decided to do is to step on the dog's territory and not only step on the dog's territory, I decided to stick my head into the dog's house. Okay, little did I know is the dog was sleeping behind his dog house. The dog house was pretty big so I did not know that. So the dog is very sensitive he senses like my dog who's upstairs right now like he was already barking sometimes the car drives by the dogs are sensitive so this dog sensed already that I stepped on his territory and I stuck my head inside of his dog house and to my great amazement from the behind of the dog house jumps this little demon vampire blood sucking animal right at me and guess what happens he went for my leg I still have a scar till this day and he starts chewing my leg. Yeah, blood everywhere. Thank God for the teacher. The teacher came in, took the dog off of me. She had to stitch me up. And you know, like I saw like this raw flesh and everything, Ah, it was nasty. And so the dog, you know, bit me. Why? Because I stepped on this territory. When you step on the territory of witchcraft, a cold, begin to read horoscopes, begin to practice yoga, begin to practice all the things that have to do with channeling the spirits. When you begin to speak to the dead, when your person that passed away begins to speak to you in the dream all the time and they're dead and you consult the dead, when you begin to see psychics, when you begin to practice that this is what you're doing as a Christian, God's protection lifts off of your life. You're stepping on the territory of darkness. You are attracting a curse upon your life. Even if you go into a healer or a herbalist or a native doctor and you're like, but they're helping so many people. They use the crucifix and they pray the saints prayers, but they're also mixing all kinds of charms. My friend, that stuff is dangerous. You are stepping on the territory of someone that's more dangerous than that German shepherd. The devil is not just going to bark at you. He's going to bite you. He's going to take possession of certain parts of your life. And what he's going to do is he's going to bring a curse upon your life. And you're like, but I'm a Christian. That doesn't matter. I was good with the teacher. But the moment I stepped on the territory of the dog, I was bit by that dog. Until that time, the dog was only barking. The devil can tempt Christians but he cannot torment Christians unless they step on his territory. So if you have stepped on the territory of demons today, you need to repent. If your parents took you to a witch doctor, you need to renounce that stuff. If you went to get charms, you need to renounce that stuff. That stuff is dangerous and that stuff brings curses upon your life. 
If you have a little Buddha in your house, you got to throw that away. Why? Because that stuff, that's stepping on the territory of a demonic German Shepherd. If you're practicing New Age or you're practicing all kinds of, you know, channeling and, and all kinds of enlightenments and trying to reach that, you know, connecting your chi to that realm, you got to stop that stuff today, cold turkey, and walk away from that. If you have crystals and all kinds of things and they speak to you like, but man, there's more power in that stuff than in the church. Find a living church. But you got to throw away the dark because the darkness brings the curse. So that's the first open door to a demonic curse. The second open door to a demonic curse is something that's less heavy, but it's as dangerous. And that's disrespect to parents. You may say, what disrespect to parents? Now, I see people saying, I believe in natural uh, medicine and herbs. I'm not talking about um, Tara um, and others who are mentioning. I'm talking about people, witch doctors who are using that stuff. I'm not talking about medicine right now. I'm talking about people who are practicing witchcraft using those things. And so, um, and we'll try to answer some questions as we go a little bit later. So the second one is disrespect for parents opens the door for a demonic curse. I see a lot of people are joining more on Facebook and as well as on YouTube. Go ahead and let us know if you're learning something. And um, people, I see people are sharing testimonies about, um, you know, yoga and meditation and all of this stuff. That stuff is, that stuff is dangerous, guys. That stuff is dangerous. And so people are like, man, I don't believe it works, you know, against me. If it's in doubt, throw it out. But the Bible talks a lot about this stuff and the history of these things are very dangerous. But the second thing that I want to talk about, which I believe that a lot of people, especially ignorant of, is disrespect to parents. Deuteronomy chapter 27 verse 16 says the following, Cursed is the one who treats his father or his mother with contempt. And all the people shall say, Amen. Come on, if you agree with God's Word, say Amen right now. If you agree with God's Word that we should honor our father and mother, drop that Amen right now, especially if you're a parent. I want to hear you shout down your children right now. And if you are a child and you agree with God's Word, begin to say Amen. God's people should say Amen. Come on somebody, Amen. Honoring your father and your mother brings a blessing. Disrespecting your father and your mother brings a curse. Now, I am not talking about right now salvation. I am talking about blessing and curses. We know that Noah pronounced a curse on his son for dishonoring him. We know that his son did not disobey his father. There was nothing that he told his son to do that his son did not do. It was simply a dishonor to his father. Now, Many people, and myself included, did not know what the difference between honor and this disobedience. So dishonor and disobedience are very different. Disobedience is your actions. Dishonor is your attitude. Come on, somebody just drop that in the comment right now. That, that, that's deep right there. Disobedience is your action. Dishonor is your attitude. Have you noticed the Ten Commandments does not say thou shalt obey your father and your mother. It says thou shalt honor your father and your mother. And it will be well with you on this earth. And then it says this, so that you will live a long life. So the secret to long life is not eating healthy. I'm not against eating healthy. The secret to long life is not going to the gym. I'm not against going to the gym. The secret to long life is not putting all kinds of skin lotions on your body. And I'm not against it because my precious wife had to put something on my skin before I went live. You know why? So that I guess I won't shine like Moses. <laughs> so the secret of long and good life, the Bible says, is to honor your father and your mother. Have you noticed the Bible doesn't say the secret of long life is to have a good father and a mother? A lot of us are not fortunate to have very godly parents. Some of us are not fortunate to have parents that left us a good example. It doesn't matter. The Bible says honor your father and your mother if you want a blessing upon your life. I know Christians who dishonor their parents. And they're, they're the ones who walk away and say, oh, I don't believe in curses. Oh, really? If you dishonor your father and your mother, I don't care how fast you speak in tongues. I don't care how many verses you know. And honestly, it doesn't matter how many prayer meetings you go to. You are cursed. Yeah, straightforward. I don't care how many degrees you have. There's a curse upon your life for dishonoring your father and your mother. 
Now, I'm not talking about you having a bad attitude once in a while, but I'm talking about a stubborn attitude, persistent contempt against your father and your mother brings a curse upon your life. You can be educated, but you will be cursed. You can be even spiritual, but you will be cursed until you deal with an open door of that curse. So, in Ephesians, Apostle Paul still says the same thing. In Ephesians chapter 6, says, children honor because this commandment is with a promise. He repeats that even in the New Testament, that honoring your father and your mother, what it does is that it releases a blessing. You may say, but my, my parents are not Christians. It does not matter. It's about honor, not about obedience. You can honorably disobey your parents. If they tell you don't go to church, you can honorably disobey your parents if you are of age. If they tell you, you know, uh, I, I remember a young man one time came to me and he's like, my dad told me to watch porn with him. And I was like, you kidding me? He did? I was like, what'd you do? He's like, well, of course I disobeyed him, but honorably. So we're called to obey God, but we're still called to honor our parents even if they are not honorable. Why? Because the blessing of God rests upon our honor and the curse of the Lord rests upon our dishonor. Uh, my parents are most likely right now watching. I remember when I was younger, I was already a youth pastor and uh, I think it was about 17 years of age and I developed this, you know, I'm a man of God mentality. <laughs> and uh, one of the things, one of my weaknesses is that I put on, I dress, um, I, I, I don't like to wear stylish and matching clothes, okay? I like to wear clothes that is comfortable, all right? And so I'm 17 years of age. I, uh, I'm going to the youth service. I'm a youth pastor, okay? I am a man of God. And my father, you know, my, my parents are, are traditional parents. I mean, not as traditional right now. My father, I remember like yesterday, he looks at me and I'm going in this sport pants. Like they're like three times my size. Like I look like T.D. Jakes in them, you know, like big, big size. He doesn't wear the big clothes right now, but he used to wear big clothes. And so I like, but they're so comfortable. And I felt so anointed in those clothes. And, uh, I'm walking with my Bible, a shirt and sport pants. And my dad looks at me and he says, where are you going? I said, dad, I'm going to church. I'm a youth pastor. It's Thursday night. And my dad says, no, you don't. Not in those clothes. And I was like, uh, yeah, in those clothes. And I had a little attitude. And so I got into my car. I'm like, old man, you're not going to tell me what to wear. That's my youth service. I'm the youth pastor. I make the rules. This is not Ukraine. This is not Pentecostal church. We're free. So, <laughs> a little spoiled brat. That's who I was, not a man of God. So I'm about to start the car and I hear a still small voice of the Holy Spirit. And he said, Vlad, go change your pants. And I said, Lord, I can show you in your word where you said you look at the heart, not at the appearance. And I felt that God respond back to me and He says, I can also show you in my word what I said, honor your father and your mother. And I said, Lord, you know, I can't do that. If I go back and change my pants, my dad is going to send me this look like he conquered me. You know, like parents give that, that look when, when you finally give in and they're like, uh-huh, it's about time we learn the rules in this house. And I was like, I can't, I'll rather die for Jesus than have my dad have this look mm -hmm. yeah uh-huh you did it uh-huh you're gonna change and i almost felt like holy spirit says that's why i want you to change your pants i want you to be conquered <laughs> i want you to be humbled because you're a teenager you're a spoiled brat that's what you are right now and i said lord i will go and change my pants i just ask you for one thing have my dad go to the bathroom so that like i go quickly in quickly out I changed my pants and my dad will never see it. In this way, I'm honoring him and I am not like humbled by him. And of course, God never answered my prayer. Dad was sitting right there on the couch. And when I walked in, he didn't hug me like a prodigal son, you know, say, oh, I know, son, how much it takes, how much humility it takes to change your pants. Um, he uh, looked at me and he said, <clears throat> yeah, but it's about time you, you learn the rules in this house. It's about time you honor God with proper clothing. I died a million deaths changing pants but you know what i learned as, as a 17 years old it's about honoring my father it's about honoring my mother 
It's about doing what they say. It's about honoring the curfew. Why? Because I want God's blessing. People look at my life today and they say, well, you know, uh, we could see God's blessing upon your life. I can tell you a short secret. You know, one is I never dabbled in a cult. I stayed away from that as far as possible. Even with things that many Christians practice, like Halloween, like you will never see me putting on a mask, walking around like a vampire, okay? Or walking around like some kind of a Bible character. I don't do that kind of stuff. Why? Because that, I don't want to step on the territory of demons. But the second thing is that I did my best. I'm not saying I was perfect to honor my father and my mother. If you're watching me right now and your father and your mother is alive and you treated them with contempt, we're going to need to repent. You need to repent and you need to apologize to your mom and to your dad today. If you're noticing something is missing in your life, if you're noticing demons are taking something out of your life, you my friend might have an open door. You're like, ah, it's not a big deal. <laughs> I just, you know, slammed the door. I cursed my mom and my dad. You know, I, I was angry. You know, they understand. Oh yeah, they do. God is going to forgive you. God is going to understand. But you're going to have a curse upon your life. And you will look at your life like, man, I'm educated. I got this, I got this. Why am I not progressing? Why am I not breaking through? Because there's a spiritual force that's holding you back. You need to break the curse of disrespect and dishonor for your father and your mother. Look at the Lord Jesus Christ. What did he do at 12 years of age? He already knew his calling and his mom and his dad is like, Jesus, uh, what are you doing here? Jesus is like, um, like saving the world, <laughs> you know, like I came to like, you know, save the world. Um, I'm your creator. I am the Yahweh. Um, and Joseph is like, uh, mm -mm, no, you're not saving the world. We're going back home and you're going to do your homework. Jesus is God. And he submits to his earthly father and honors him. And at the age of 30, he started his ministry. You know how he started his first miracle? His mama told him. She told him, could you go help them? Jesus honored his father and his mother. When he was dying on the cross, thinking about you and I, we say, oh, when he was dying, he was thinking about you. Eh, I don't see that in the Bible. You know what I see in the Bible? When Jesus was dying, he was thinking about his mom. He was arranging housing for his mom. Because most likely his father already passed away. Jewish tradition says that Joseph died, you know, at the, at the tender age of Jesus. And so his mom was there and as the oldest son, he was responsible to take care of his mom when she was getting old. And now he's arranging housing and care for his mom. Jesus is God. Who you think you are? Who I think I am? Not to honor my father and my mother. In my teenage years, in my young adult years, if you want a blessing, I can give you a shortcut to God's blessing. And it's not always getting college. It's not always getting political connections. It's not always fasting and praying. It's a very simple honor your father and your mother. If there is a curse upon your life, examine your heart. Has there been a contempt, disrespect for your father and your mother? You know, I've been actually practicing this lately of taking one day a week and visiting my father and my mother. Like they don't need me. They're doing so good. They're such a great blessing to my life. But to be there, just to be present, to fellowship. How are you doing? Eat together and just be blessing them, being a blessing to them. And I know they're proud of me. They tell me that so many times. I have an amazing relationship with my mom and my dad. But still to realize that I am there and God looks at my relationship to them to decide if He will bless me or not. He doesn't look at what they do to me. He's looking at how I react to them. So for those of you teenagers who are avoiding your mom and dad, who doesn't call them back, who call them a thorn in the flesh and everything, you need to repent because there's a curse of God upon your life. You need to break that. There's something not right. God cannot bless this mess and that's a mess. That's not a blessing. And so if you're receiving something, go ahead and drop that in the comment below. Stream looks good, Stephanie says. Elena says, wow, it's so powerful. Thank you. God bless you. Examine your heart. It hits me. Yell. Come on. Uh, thank you, Pastor Vlad. Brian is saying that I see Rachel, Delia and others um, uh, commenting. So go ahead and let me know that you're receiving something. This is the open door number two. The rest of them I'm going to go through more quickly. So but go ahead and drop me. Let me know if you're receiving something. Let me know what you're learning right now. Let me know. Just share that on Facebook as well and on YouTube. Uh, tag other people. I see we have 300 people right now on YouTube and over 227 on Facebook. Praise God. More people are, uh, are learning. And you know this whole thing of dishonoring your father and your mother is so dangerous guys. I see young people today 
And they're not only dishonoring their father and their mother, they're also dishonoring authorities. I remember one of our interns, we were driving in the car. Um, I won't mention which year this internship was at. We're driving and the police officer is passing, passing us by. And the young man has the audacity to look at me and say, oh, what a pig. And I was like, did you see a swine on the road? He's like, no, a, a cop. I was like, did you just call police officer a pig? I said, let me tell you something. Your license was suspended, huh? I was like, have you ever went to jail? I literally started <laughs> pulling his history. I was like, you got a lot of tickets, huh? And your premium insurance is through the roof. He's like, how did you know? I was like, the only person who will disrespect a cop like that is somebody who has a problem with the law. And I was like, you need to repent. And I never ever want to hear out of your mouth that you referenced to a police officer as a pig or you referenced a president as disrespectful words. I'm like, we're called to honor, not to disrespect. If you agree that we need to honor and we need to respect, go ahead and drop that in the comment below in Jesus' name. Vitaly Germak, thank you so much for becoming a partner. Appreciate, uh, appreciate that. As well as I saw that you donated right now toward the studio. Thank you so much. And Regina, thank you for your donation. As well as Brianna Howard and Chad and Maria and Jeff and Mark Holloway and Joshua. Thank you so much. For those of you guys who God is moving upon your heart to give and to sponsor the studio and the ministry. I really appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. We're helping to spread the message of Jesus through the digital content all around the world, giving all of our stuff for free. So thank you. Now, number three. Number three, uh, open door for the demons and the curses, mainly curses, is injustice to the weak and helpless people, especially abortion. In Deuteronomy 27 verse 18 and 19 says the following, Cursed is the one who makes the blind wander off the road, and all the people shall say Amen. I mean, you're reading this, you're like, somebody will take the blind person and help them wander off the road? Yeah, they should be cursed. Continue, cursed is the one who perverts justice, due to the stranger, the fatherless and the widow. And all the people shall say, Amen. If you agree that, you know, misleading a blind person or perverting justice for a widow, for an orphan brings a curse, like the Bible says, drop the Amen right now. Let me know. Say, hey, you know, I agree. That's right. Person like that should be cursed. And that's what the Bible says. Bible says, it doesn't matter if you're Christian or not. If you are going to cause injustice to the widow, to the orphan and to the blind, to the less fortunate in our communities, to people who are disabled, elderly, and cause intentional harm, scamming people. And we're going to talk about that in a moment about, about stealing. And so, but if you cause that, the Bible says there's a curse that will rest upon the person's life. I'm going to add one more to that, which I believe is a great injustice that happens in our generation. It's abortion. It's when you take the baby from its safest place in the world, the womb of her mother, and you destroy the baby and you kill the baby. It's one thing when you kill another person. It's terrible, it's bad, it's sin. It's another thing when you take a defenseless little baby, you know, and for those of you who are like, oh, it's just a choice in the womb. It's, it's not a real baby. Really? Why is the world even calls when a mother and a baby the mother is pregnant with murdered, double homicide? Even the world calls it double homicide. It's not one homicide, two murders happen. Why? Because it's the real being. That person is there. And when, when murder happens in the womb, it's a direct open door to a demonic curse. I've seen it happen to people. When they commit abortion, if something follows them, nightmares, curses begin to follow them, depression begins to follow them. I've seen people who after that they cannot find the right path in their life. And my goal is not to condemn you today. If maybe you've had some of these sins with parents, perhaps you were involved in witchcraft or maybe in your previous life you committed an abortion. I want to tell you something that you need to repent of that and you need to renounce that. And you need to make a decision not to commit these sins anymore. Because these open door to demons, these open door to the demonic powers. You can't just simply, you're like, well, but I ask God to forgive me. Please understand, you murder somebody, okay? I don't care how the world calls it. The world calls it a choice. We follow the Word of God. We don't follow the world. And God's Word clearly states that it's a murder. That's somebody's, that's somebody's destiny. That is God's child. That's not your kid. God brought us through our parents, but we belong to God. You know, I belong to my Father in heaven. 
and God used my parents to bring me into this world. Imagine if God wants me to be brought into this world and my parents aborted me. Like, not only, you know, God's purposes wouldn't be accomplished, but like, they would do that to God's kid. And so when you do that, you're doing it to a God's kid. You're not just doing it to an embryo. This is not an embryo, okay? This is a, a child in an image and likeness of God. When we mistreat the orphans, when we mistreat the, the blind people, when we mistreat the, the poor people and, and we cause injustice, it opens a door of a curse. You know, one of the things that me and my wife uh, love doing is supporting orphans. And so secretly, it's, it's one of the things that we do on the side outside of our giving to the ministries is that we also give and support financially people who don't have parents. Another um, thing that anytime we would go on the street, me and my, me and my, my wife mainly, and she really honestly taught me to, to be very careful because before I was kind of like looking at people, homeless people standing on the, the corner streets and asking for money I, and I always like, oh, they're going to spend it on drugs and a lot of them do. But, and so I wouldn't give money to them. You know, I wasn't doing anything bad to them. I just wouldn't help them. And so, and um, when I went to Ukraine one time with my wife and I see this elderly grandma sitting there, you know, asking for money and asking for elms and, you know, I would pass them by and my wife would always go back and drop a dollar, drop five dollars. And I was like, ah, like we don't know the real story. And she's like, that's not of our, that's not for us to judge. She said, if we have extra and they're so broken and they stand on the side, she says, we need to help. We need to help. And you know what happens? Anytime you give to an elderly person who's struggling, anytime you give to a homeless person, guess what they do to you? They say, bless you. They release blessing on you. Anytime you help the orphans, in their heart they release, bless them Lord. So guess what happens? You're attracting blessing. You, it might not be a lot, but a blessing is coming your way. But what happens when you begin to hurt the innocent? When you begin to hurt the people that are in need? Hurt the poor? The Jesus says poor you will always have with you. That's why I'm against socialism. Because Jesus says you will always have poor. Why? Because God wants to see how we're going to react. Are we going to help them? And God didn't call the government to fix the poverty. He called us to fix the poverty by elevating people who are poor to the level where we are at right now and helping them with opportunities and sometimes with finances and resources. You know, when three months ago, um, you know, I gave a car away uh, to a gentleman in, in our church and he was struggling. He has only one car, they're married. And, you know, I could have sold that car and made money and that was my idea actually, you know. But in the last five years, we gave about six cars away to people that were in need. And I'm going to tell you why. It's not so I can brag about it. It's because they, they were in need. And when I gave them, me and my wife gave that car, people would break down and they will release a blessing. They will say, may God bless you. They couldn't give me anything back. I don't need anything from them. I didn't do it so I can get something from them. But when they release that blessing, God takes those words that come from the depth of their heart, say, God, you just answered my prayer. God, you just blessed me. God, thank you. God sees that and God releases a blessing. But if you hurt somebody like that, if you wound somebody like that, who is maybe less fortunate, who maybe doesn't have parents and you ignore their cry when they need it and you pass them by, you know what's going to happen? They might release a curse upon your life and that curse will stick. Why? Because the Bible says the curses that don't have a cause, they don't stick, but curses that have a deep emotional cry attached. What did God say to Moses when He came to deliver Israelites? He says, I heard the cry. See, Israel had no lawyers. Israel had nobody to help them. They got beaten. They got Their children got thrown out. So what they did is they cried out to a God in heaven. God help us. God help us. You know what God did? He heard every cry. He heard every single groan. And He said, they have no lawyers. They have no defenders. I will come and defend them. He crushed Pharaoh. Killed all the firstborn children. Destroyed their economy, literally shattered that empire. Why? Because they were cursed. What they did to Israel, how they enslaved them, how they treated them, they drew a curse. How did that curse came about? Because the people they mistreated released a cry for justice and God 
released the curse. He destroyed it. He punished. He disciplined. If you want a blessing upon your life, help the poor, help the needy without them paying you back, without them saying thank you, but let them release a blessing. Let that old grandma, that homeless person say those words, bless you, bless you, bless you. And those words will stick to your life and God will bless you in Jesus name. Come on, if you want that blessing right now, drop that in the comment below. Say, hey, I want that blessing. I want God's blessing upon my life. I want God's blessing upon my life in Jesus name. I'm not talking about stuff. I'm not talking about clothes. I'm not talking about bling and bling. I'm talking about just the blessing of God. I'm about to go to number four. If you're still with me, um, let me know that, hey, let's keep going. And uh, thank you so much, Maria, also, Ligia, and uh, Thomas for your gift and for, for helping with the studio. I really appreciate your contribution to that. You are helping um, others to meet Jesus. You're helping others to download content for free. And so, um, Thank you. I want that blessing. Yes, 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 Mark. I want that blessing as well. Thank you. I want that blessing on Facebook. I want to see those comments as well saying, hey, I want that blessing from God. God bless me. I think some of you need to cry out like Jacob said, Lord, bless me. Lord, I will not let you go until you bless me. But you have to also honor the principles of God. You got to help the poor. You got to help the needy. You got to help those that are broken and you got to stop. If you ever done this where you hurt somebody, where you committed abortion, you got to repent and you got to renounce that in Jesus mighty name. Number four, it's unnatural or illicit sex. Unnatural or illicit sex. So sexual immorality, what it does is it opens door to demonic kingdom. In also it says in Deuteronomy 27 verse 20 and 22 and 23 and I'm going to read it. It's kind of gross actually. Um, Cursed is the one who lies with his father's wife because he has uncovered his father's bed. And all the people shall say, Amen. Uh, yeah, Amen. Cursed is the one who lies with any kind of animal. Uh-huh. Amen. Cursed is the one who lies with his sister, the daughter of his father and the daughter of his mother. And the people shall say, Amen. Mm-hmm. Cursed is the one who lies with his mother-in-law and the people shall say, Amen. Mm-hmm. But can I, can I tell you something, guys, that... Um, Condoms can protect you from sexually transmitted diseases, but they cannot protect you from sexually transmitted demons. There is such a thing as sexually transmitted demons. If you watched any deliverances or studied anything about a cult, you will see that many times sex, the intercourse, is used as an initiation into the kingdom of demons. There are witches that are on assignment to sleep with men or men that sleep with women and by the act of sexual intercourse they initiate the other person into a kingdom of darkness. If you don't believe me, look in the scriptures. Paul says, he who sleeps with a prostitute is one with a prostitute and he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. Sex is not just physical, sex is merging of spirits. It's merging of spirits and many people pick up demons through sex. Many people open their life to demonic curses through sexual immorality. There are people who would even lose their manhood. They're like, man, I can't, you know, perform anymore. Or people would say, hey, after that, my sex life is completely destroyed. Through, especially as well, through pornography. All of these things, they open demonic, they open the door for demonic curses in person's life. I remember praying for this kid. He broke our guitar <laughs> uh, because we were praying in the music room uh, for deliverance and he got a demon by sleeping with the witch. Now he did not know it was a witch. It was just the, it was just a girl that he had a one night thing with and turns out afterwards that she practices witchcraft and she, please forgive me, took his semen and uh, said for some kind of a ritual and next thing that happened afterwards he goes crazy and he starts losing his mind. He can sleep at night and everything and he came. He's like, I am not straight. I am not can think right. He says, I'm losing my mind. I'm going to kill myself if somebody doesn't help me. So we start praying for him and of course God broke that curse and God delivered him and uh, but it was a violent, violent deliverance. How did that demon and how did that curse came upon his life? It was through sex. One of the many reasons you have to abstain from sexual immorality is for protecting your life from demons. One of the many reasons not only because it's pleasing to God, not only it's the best gift you can give to your spouse, but it can protect you from many demons if you stay away from sexual immorality. For those people who slept with animals, you got a demon. 
If you slept with animals, there's a curse upon your life. You got to repent. Same thing with homosexuality. Same thing with lesbianism. That stuff, you may say, well, we just like each other. You know, it's just, it's just love. You know, it's just, it's just love. My friend, my friend, that stuff is perversion. The scripture clearly talks about it. I'm not saying that you're a bad person. I'm saying you're a dead person who needs Jesus Christ and you need to be resurrected from the dead. If you want to follow Jesus Christ, you got to renounce those things. The Bible says we have to renounce the hidden things of shame and you got to accept Jesus Christ. The Lord doesn't just want to make you straight. He wants to make you pure and He wants to make you holy. He wants to sanctify you and He wants to wash you with His blood. That's why a lot of people get diseases, a lot of people get demonic even attacks when they begin to practice immoral, illicit and unnatural sex. Number five, that opens door to a demonic kingdom and opens door to curses and that is anti-Semitism. It's hating the Jews. It's not um, loving or disrespecting, hating, cursing Jewish people. And I'm going to read to you Genesis chapter 12 verse 2 and 3. It says the following, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. We know guys like Adolf Hitler who was destroying the Jews. We know that also people in, in Russia who were killing, killing the Jews and all this stuff. There's a curse that gets released by God. It's one of the first curses God has promised. Listen, God's going to keep His promise and that is if you curse the Jewish nation, Jewish people. Every author of this book, my friend, is a Jewish. Jesus came to a Jewish nation and when He's coming back, may I remind you, He's not coming back to Washington DC. He's not coming back to New York. He's not going to land in Saudi Arabia, okay? He's not landing somewhere in Africa. He is going to Jerusalem. His feet will stand on the Mount of Olives and we have to honor and pray for the Jewish nation. And so for those who may be like, you hate Jewish people or maybe perhaps you're watching me and you are from Middle East and there's a conflict between the Jew Jewish nation. I want to tell you something. If you want to be a, have a blessing of God upon your life, you have to repent of anti-Semitism. You have to repent of a hatred toward the Jewish people. In fact, I read a statistic where a Wall Street Journal, a guy named uh, Brad Stevens, he said, today there is no great university in Arab world, no serious scientific base or a stunned library culture. He said in 20 15, so in, in the year uh, 2015, U.S. Patent Office reported 3,804 patents from Israel. So 3,800 patents from Israel. And compared to 364 patents from Saudi Arabia, 56 from United Arab Emirates and 30 from Egypt. W what is one of the reasons? One of the biggest things that happened in the Middle East is discontentment and hate toward Jewish people. And honestly, I really believe that anti-Semitic spirit is a spirit of Antichrist. It's a spirit of the devil. And so this is nothing political. This is scriptural. We as Christians, we pray for the Jewish people. We want to bring the gospel to Jewish people and we love the Jewish people. We pray for Jerusalem. That does not mean we don't love people in the Middle East. It does not mean that we don't love people that are Muslims. It does not mean that we don't love neighbors of the Jewish people. But we pray constantly for Jerusalem and we pray for the blessing because if you bless Israel, God says, I will bless you. If you curse Jerusalem, if you curse the, the descendants of Abraham, Scripture promises the curse will be upon our life. Number six, open door to demons. It's Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 26. Nor shall you bring an abomination into your house, lest you be doomed to destruction like it. You shall utterly detest it and utterly abhor it for it is an accursed thing. Now I'm going to read one more verse and that is Joshua 7 13. Go get up, sanctify the people and say, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow because thus says the Lord of Israel, there is an accursed thing in your midst O Israel. You cannot stand before your enemies until you take away the accursed thing from among you. Watch this. They are in the promised land. They are God's people and God says you cannot stand in front of your enemies because there is an accursed thing in your midst. What is the cursed thing? It's something that was dedicated to Satan, to demons, to idols. 
in book of Acts, Apostle Paul, when he came to Ephesus, they would burn magic books. They would burn objects that were demonic. Now, I understand for some people this may come as a shock, but there is such a thing as things, objects being dedicated to demons that have demonic power attached to them. And when you bring these objects into your house, into your life, you are bringing demons into your life and you are bringing curses into your life. Now, one of those things is dream catchers, charms, Ouija boards, magic books, black magic, white magic, things on sorcery, horoscopes, or just things, bracelets that's supposed to give you a good luck charm, things that are demonic in nature, things that are used as channels of the kingdom of darkness. See, the power of God can flow through objects. The power of God can flow through clothes. The scripture says a woman with an issue of blood touched the hem of his garment, Jesus' garment, she was instantly healed. We know that power of God not only can flow through garments, it can flow through objects. The rod of Moses was used to split the Red Sea. We see that the oil is used as a medium through which the Spirit of God moves. We see that God used water to bring healing to Naaman. We see that God can use the saliva of Jesus to bring healing. So objects and different non-physical things, they can be used by God to release His power. Same thing works in the demonic. Same thing works in the kingdom of darkness. And so people who bring all kinds of, you know, paintings of dragons and people who bring all kinds of, you know, books or who become obsessed with, with things that are, that are, they're just dark in nature. You, you don't even have to have a discernment. You don't even have to know the, the past of this, of the, this holiday or this particular book or this particular image to know this stuff just doesn't, shouldn't sit right with you as the children of light skulls and all kinds of you know like things that you're bringing into your life and things that you wear you have to be very careful because those things can open a door to a curse in your life i would encourage you look over your life look over the things that you have in your house and ask the holy spirit has any of this stuff opened the door to a curse i remember and i respect this man of god greatly some of you who follow my teaching you will know that I copy a lot of his teachings as well because honestly, and I imitate his life, Derek Prince. Derek Prince shared when he had a financial struggle. He was struggling financially. And you know what started to happen with Derek Prince is that as he was praying with, um, for his blessing, for his prosperity, something began to happen with him. The Lord showed him this dragon paintings that were in his living room. Now the dragon paintings were passed on from his forefather who was fighting a war in China. So it's a very expensive piece of art and it's like, um, you know, like one of those things that get passed on from generations. It's like very important, you know, like there shouldn't be any meaning to it. And uh, he's praying and these <laughs> dragons from the living room are looking right at him. And so as he's praying, the Holy Spirit says, he says, why do you have dragons in your living room? He said, well, Lord, you understand. And he's trying to, you know, debate it. And he, he's teaching deliverance. He's ready, practicing deliverance. And uh, he has dragons in his house. He says, you know, all the excuses. And God shows him. He says, your dragons are eating your prosperity. And so what he did is he threw away the dragons. And he, he, according to him, if I'm not mistaken, in one year, the income, the ministry went four times, quadrupled four times. And this is a man of God. And so it's very important not to allow accursed things. When I go to overseas, when I go to Indian reservation or in the gas station and somebody offers me charms or you know dream catchers or hey buy this or buy that, I am extremely careful. Even the clothing, sometimes I look at some stuff and it has certain symbols. I'm like no, 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 uh -uh. that's not for me. Oh but we'll give it to you for free. No, you keep that yourself. That I do not need that in my life. Why? Because I want to be sensitive. I'm not saying I'm like super constantly cautious and like panic you know about what I wear and who designed it and everything but there's obvious signs of bringing objects and garments and pieces and products into your home that are demonic. Another thing that's on the side, if you broke up with your boyfriend or with your girlfriend and you had some kind of an attachment and you're keeping their gifts, you know, it could be an open door for that 
attachment and that soul tie to be with that person. And sometimes the best thing to do is to get rid of those gifts or sell those gifts and completely get rid of that. And so um, I have different stories and it's in my book. You, you can read it about different people who couldn't be delivered until they removed demonic objects from the house. So cleanse your house, purify your house. Do not bring an abomination into your house. And the God says to Joshua, you cannot stand against your enemies. Why? Because He says, you got an accursed thing in you, in you, in your tent. And when you get rid of that, He says, then I'm going to move through you again. So when you bring a little demon in your house or you bring a little thing, oh, but this is my neighbor, my friend, they gave it to me and it's just their gift and stuff. And so, um, my friend, no, don't bring little demonic things in your house. Keep your house pure and keep your house holy. Somebody say Amen. If you agree with me right now, come on, say Amen. Drop that comment. Drop that one. Go ahead, spam the comments right now. Let me know if you're still with me. And um, I see somebody saying, I got unread horoscopes. I don't believe in them. Hey, you, you better block that stuff or you better remove that. Yeah, you better better be safe than sorry iris said i agree with you come on somebody that's right so drop that right now let me know that you're watching um let me know that you are still with me i see we got 400 people watching on youtube come on that's that's that we broke 400 come on somebody thank you jesus and then i see thank you so much for uh, maria sotos and legiti and thomas and mitzi and Lori victor for your donation monica michelle fox and terence and ruth for your gift thomas Wenzel, thank you for your generous donation god bless you really really appreciate you guys supporting and we have just a few more that we're going to touch on and then we're going to pray i'm just excited i feel like the fire of god's going to fall uh, those of you who got charms and those of you who got certain things god's god's going to move today uh, this is not just teaching there's going to be a manifestation of the glory of god that's going to come in just a moment so go ahead and share go ahead and invite go ahead and spam um, go ahead and just just let us know that you're still here okay Vladik thank you you're still there thank you so much throwing away my ex-boyfriend's jacket that's right sweet and fierce you go for it or sell it um, horoscopes are demonic too yes they are love your preaching uh, Pastor Vlad appreciate you amen amen now now we're gonna touch on something that um, some of you are not gonna want to listen to what I'm about to to share with you um, number seven is stealing is an open door to curses. Now, I'm going to read you a verse and if our moderators can, um, after I turned from Satanism, so I see this, I'm going to read this comment. After I turned from Satanism, I burned everything, even the clothes I did in witchcraft, even down to underwear, completely clean and out, never looked back. Natalie Lim, man, thank you for sharing that. Come on somebody, that's right. My daughter will not remove her crystals out of her room. She tells me I'm crazy. Uh, Sherry, your daughter is crazy. Um, okay, so that's not, yeah, crystals. That, that, that's not good and stuff so keep praying the Lord will open her eyes and as long as you're the mother in the house and you pay the bills she, she gotta follow your rules and so that's 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 my thing Zechariah 5 4 so drop that in, in the comment right now Zechariah 5 4 and this is what it says I will send out the curse says the Lord of hosts it shall enter the house of the thief and the house of the one who swears falsely by my name it shall remain in the midst of his house and consume it its timber and stones now this is very clear where god says he will send the curse into a house of a thief in fact the frame of his house the timber the two by four will be eaten and consumed the stones will be eaten like stones will be eaten through this curse it's like it will eat things on the inside even the strong hard things will be eaten by the inside why because of stealing because of robbing now in the bible we see the stealing is a sin it's a breaking of one of the ten commandments we know that judas was a disciple of jesus and the bible calls him clearly a thief and it's interesting because his theft left led to a demonic possession in fact the bible says that satan put into the heart of judas and then we know that satan entered judas you may say well you know satan didn't enter him because of that well, stealing is an open door to a curse and it's one of the things that happened to judas he was dubious with his waves it's not that judas just loved money this was more than that he was stealing meaning he was taking money out of jesus's treasury and spending it probably on his shoes or some other stuff and he was stealing we know also the servant of Elisha. He took what was not his and the, and the leprosy of Naaman came upon him. 
We also know that Achan took what God said not to take and we know that he was destroyed. And we see so on and on and on where people who stole drew a curse upon their life. Now, stealing, robbery, burglary, identity theft, stealing from office, taking intellectual property, illegally downloading content, shoplifting, are acts of sowing which will result in reaping a curse. When you begin, and I'm not talking about you took a pencil or something, but I'm talking about when you begin to take things that are not yours, especially stealing. When you sell the car and you know it has a broken engine, but you're smart. You went to a shop, they removed a little light on the dashboard and you're selling the car like good. And then you quickly delete your number because you made a buck out of it. If you do that, you are cursed. If you have people working for you and you agree for a pay, but you don't pay them while you're making money, you're cursed. That stuff brings a curse upon a person's life. And we have to stop that and we have to repent of that and we have to never do that again because it will eat our timber, it will eat our profits, it will eat our health and it will eat our life. When there was a time where we were downloading stuff through LimeWire and uh, Torrent, some of you might not know what that is, it's, it's from the BC days. And uh, I remember it like yesterday, me and my wife started to learn about, you know, uh, principles of, of what it means to uh, prosper and everything. And one of them is giving and the other one is not stealing. And so I remember it like yesterday, it was, I was watching this TV show. And on Tuesday night, we would go on a, on a date and uh, we would always watch this episode of this TV show. And so I didn't want to wait until 10 o'clock and watch it with, uh, with all kinds of commercials. And so what I did is I would download it, you know, illegally. And of course my excuse was, well, it's Hollywood. I'm downloading from, I'm ripping off Hollywood. You know, they're already ungodly. So like, you know, it, it doesn't count. And I remember like yesterday, I started to learn about this topic and the Holy Spirit started convicting me. He says, you're a thief. And I was like, nah, I'm stealing from Hollywood. You know, like <laughs> it's not a big deal. Plus it's like what, 99 cents anyway. Plus I'm doing it for a good reason. I don't want to stay up till 12 o'clock and wait and watch it late with commercials. And uh, plus, you know, I'm going to morning prayer tomorrow. And I really felt convicted by God. Say, so you are a thief. And so I repented, I stopped downloading, completely deleted all those programs. And starting that point, I became extremely sensitive. Make sure that I don't spill financial blood by lying to people on things that could benefit me financially, but it could rip them off. Selling things that I know are broken. Like I remember one time I had a car and the guy I bought it from lied to me. Literally, that car was a piece of trash. Like that stuff, there were wires cut, there were things broken in that car. That car was accelerating by itself on the traffic light, almost killed me. Yeah, horrible. When I took it to mechanic, they're like, dude, whoever sold you this car ripped you off. I mean, they made, a, they made a buck, they deleted the number and everything and, and I was about to sell it. But now I know that it's broken. I can't sell it like that. And so part of me was like, well, you know, it's not my fault. They ripped me off. I'm going to, you know, just sell it the way it is. And God dealt with my heart and He said, Vlad, no, no, no. He says, do unto others as you would want somebody to do for you. He says, if you spill financial blood, this is exactly what this is. It's spilling financial blood when you're ripping somebody off. He said, you are cursed. And so it took me months. I had to find money to fix the car. And then when I fixed the car, and now I know nothing is broken with it, something begins to happen. Now I sold it for a full price. And the guy who was buying from me, I told him, I said, listen, I'm going to tell you everything that's wrong with this car. And you're not going to want to buy it. And I'm going to charge you full price for it because this car is fixed and this car is perfect. And after that, guess what happened? This person bought it, paid a full price. And I live with a clean consciousness because God cannot bless dubious ways when we spill financial blood. I know I heard the testimony of one lady who was struggling financially and she took money from her co-worker's purse. And the money she took from her co-worker's purse was actually a money that was supposed to be spent on medical bills. And her co-worker who was saving this money to pay for her daughter's medical bills, she came in front of the rest of the work and says, please, somebody stole my money. Please put it back into my purse because I need this money for my child. My child is ill and I need this money and whoever stole it, please, you just don't understand. I, I need this money. 
And so of course this lady, out of embarrassment or whatever, she did not want to give the money. And uh, years later, she gets cancer. Now I'm not sure if that was the real reason or not. She comes to this church and right when she's asking God, heal me from cancer, healing from cancer, she remembers the incident where she stole the money from a lady who was saving that money for her daughter's medical bills. And interestingly, in her pocket at that point, some 20 years later, she has exactly the same amount of money, you know, in her wallet that she stole. And she broke down, she starts crying before God. She said, God, I'm so sorry. I don't know what that lady is. I can't find her. And she takes that money and she gives it in donation to the church. And she says, Lord, I'm just giving this to you right now as my way of saying, Lord, I'm so sorry. The power of God came upon her during her repentance. She was completely healed of cancer. When short man Zacchaeus, Jesus comes into his house, the Bible says that he says, I will return back four times more to everyone I stole from. And he says, I will give half of my income. You know what Jesus said to him? He didn't say, oh no Zacchaeus, you don't need to do that. You already prayed the sinner's prayer, you know, like all of this stuff, you know, you're forgiven. Just make a check to Jesus Ministry International, you're fine. No, no, no. Jesus says, now salvation has come to this house. A lot of uh, men of God in, on our team, they are, when, you know, in our past, when they were stealing or not paying certain things off or doing kind of some dubious sneaky ways and when they wanted to prosper and things were not happening and the Lord started convicting them and said, I want you to start going back to those stores, the stores you stole the TV from, the things you stole this from, go to your relatives, the people that you took this from, the people that you, you know, stole this from and begin to confess and repent and until you do, I will not bless you financially. Now please understand, some cases we don't know already those people, they, they are they are moved on but I want to tell you, if there's a financial curse upon your life, and you've been a thief and you're a scammer, maybe you're watching right now and used to scam people or used to trick people or maybe you used to defraud people or perhaps you sold things, they were broken, your consciousness screamed at you, no don't do it, maybe you stole money from your parents or maybe you stole money from your neighbors, maybe you stole things, I want to tell you to repent and if you can make amends, take as long as you need, I know people who took two years to make amends before they could work on their own finances. It's better to fix that so that there will be a blessing of God upon your life than to try to build this financial empire that we're trying to build sometimes on a very flawed foundation. God clearly states here, the house of a thief will have a curse that will eat the timber and the stones, that will eat things on the inside. Remember Jesus was crucified between two thieves. So if you're a thief, if you stole, if you lied, you need to stop doing that today and you need to repent and the curse can be broken and you need to make amends with people you stole from. Confess. Some of them will require you to pay them back. Some of them will forgive you but you need to come clean so God can bless you in Jesus mighty name. And then the last two more, are, are you guys still with me? I see 464 of you. Um, if you are there, go ahead and drop that eight right now. Drop number eight because we're ready for number eight. So drop the number eight right now. And uh, we're, we're learning more. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And, um, and I see even more donations are coming in. God bless you. Um, people talking about crystals and everything. Okay, we're still here. Number eight. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Go ahead. I see Maida Mendez. Go ahead. Donna, good to see you all the way from Pasco. Um, as you are guys are watching and sharing this, wonderful truths, number eight is there. What if you can't make uh, amends? Um, if you can't make amends, you just, just deep repentance will, uh, will uh, suffice. Uh, if you can't make um, amends, deep repentance will suffice. And so sometimes God will use you to give to somebody else or bless somebody else that amount. I know like sometimes that's what people did is they would honestly bless or help the people who were in need with the amount that they got ripped off. Um, number eight, stinginess toward God. Now this is, uh, I don't have no hidden agenda. 
on sharing this. I'm just sharing with you the, what the Word of God says. Stinginess toward God. Malachi chapter 3 verse 8 and 12. You are cursed with a curse for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all tithes into the storehouse that there might be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour out for you such a blessing that there will be no room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the wine fail to bear fruit fruit for you in the field says the Lord of hosts and all the nations shall call you blessed and you shall be a delightful land says the Lord of hosts. Now so number eight is when you are stingy with God. In other words when you are not returning your tithe. Now I understand this is a very controversial topic for many people when it comes to tithing. Um, for me it's not a controversial topic. I really believe that number one God owns everything and we are fortunate and blessed and privileged. God is so generous. He lets us manage the 90 and when we bring back, watch the, watch, watch the wording, not give, we bring back the tithe. L look what God says. He said, bring all the tithe. He didn't say give all the tithe, bring all the tithe. Now uh, one of the people in this room right now has my camera and the camera is pointed right at me outside of this camera. And so let's just say that this person takes the camera home with them and then a day later they come back and they say, Pastor Vlad, I want to bless you with the camera. I just got moved up on my heart. Just, just, just really, just, man, it's just so hard like for me to do that. But it's just, I just want to bless you with the camera. And they give me the camera. Now, I will look at them and I'll say, okay, I'm, I'm glad that it, takes a lot of tears for you to give the camera but inside I'm like oh that's not giving you're returning what's kind of mine already and so that's really what tithing is the God says bring he doesn't say give you know what that means that means that the tithe is already his in fact everything we have is his nothing belongs to us and how I know that because when you're going to be dead you're going to be buried six feet under you're not you came with nothing you're going to leave with nothing so all of these things that don't belong to us they belong to God we are not entitled we're not the owners we are the stewards and God is so generous with us he lets us manage the 90. so when we bring back the 10 we're not generous we're just responsible that's all I mean imagine you're putting your money in the bank and then you're coming in and the the manager at the bank said oh no we're not giving you the money why um we, we, we don't like you. We're not giving you white. We, we don't feel like we should be giving you money. You're like, oh, excuse me? That's my money. Like, I demand to get that back. See, like, everything belongs to God. God lets us manage the 90 and we bring back the 10. As people say, well, in, under the new covenant, you know, Jesus never talked about tithing. Actually, He did. He says, don't forsake he said, do these things, but don't forsake the other. The other, he spoke about tithing. But in every case, Jesus came to people's lives. They end up giving half of their income. Some gave everything. The apostolic church, they gave everything and they sold. And one guy gave half and he dropped dead. Yeah, imagine that. We don't want that one, you know. Like, hey, go bring everything. And then one dude brings only half of his income and drops dead in the altar at the church. You know, so that's New Testament. So I don't know which Bible you're reading, but New Testament speaks about a very generous Christians. It's not about being rich, it's about being generous. I believe you can be a Christian and be poor, but you cannot be a Christian and be stingy. You know, I believe that you can be a Christian and be a person who struggles financially, but you cannot be a Christian and be a person that is not generous, period. And I was the person who was very stingy before. I still tithe, but I was very stingy. And God started working in my heart. And I really, my dad taught me this revelation. And my dad is uh, probably in the stream right now. He really taught me this revelation. He said, Vlad, you know, we went to a church that didn't teach on tithing. But he says, Vlad, 10% is not yours. It belongs to God. And he says, you have to bring it always back to God. And so, and that's kind of what I was taught it as a child. And, you know, we live in America. Um, you know, this is not, I wasn't born here. You know, my father and my mother, you know, and they're financially blessed. They, they work at, you know, very normal jobs. They don't work. My dad doesn't have a business or anything. And I see how God blesses them. And I'm like, man, what is the secret? And I really think the secret is this. God says, if you return what is mine, and I will pour out a window of blessing. This has nothing to do with heaven. This has nothing to do with salvation. This has to do with blessing of God and not only on our finances, but on our life. A few little things I want to draw from this verse that honestly are key. Number one, he says, bring all the tithes into storehouse. I believe your tithe goes to your local church, not to a minister. 
uh, that there will be a food in my house. A lot of people complain and they say, man, my church sucks. You know, our pastor, you know, doesn't preach really well. You know, nothing goes well in the church. Well, the thing about it is that if nobody brings their tithes, if nobody brings food, there will be no, if nobody brings their tithe, there will be no food in the house. And meaning there will be no spiritual food. There will be no people on the full-time ministry working on these things. And so you have to bring your, I believe when you bring your tithe to your local church, then the church has funds and they, they can, you know, buy things, they can do things. Pastor can actually, you know, work on praying and fasting and studying for God's Word instead of just working, you know, eight hours and then trying to spend time with his family and still trying to uh, come up with a sermon. And so another thing is that the Bible says, try me in this. So I believe the tithe is, you know, for uh, tithe is uh, for number 10 and tithe is number 10 and number 10 in the Bible is num number for testing. And so tithe is the only thing in the Bible that you can test God with, but God is also testing you with. And so uh, I'm a firm believer in that practice. I've been practicing it since I was a teenager, since the first paycheck I got, which I got when my car, uh, when one car ran me over and broke my leg. And so I got paid off, uh, compensated from an insurance company. And so my father took the money and bought the car, my car with it. And then he took the 10%. He didn't even like ask me for it. He's like, hey, this is for God and this is for you. I'm going to buy you a car. I'm like, dad, like the money for God is a lot of money. I'm a teenager, you know, like I could buy so much things. My dad's like, uh-uh. He's like, that belongs to the Lord. And ever since that time, you know, and with time we increased our tithe and we started giving more and everything but I really really believe that if you um, don't tithe there's a curse. I'm not saying that you're not going to heaven. I'm not saying that you're not a righteous person. I'm just saying that you can have a curse upon your finances and you, in order to break that you have to be a person that take the first 10 percent and bring it to God's house. If you don't have a church that you attend to and maybe this is going to be your church Thursday night, hey God bless you. You can bring that into Vladimir Subject Ministry but that's that's not my desire. Please understand that my desire is that you honor God's Word and you obey God's Word. Number nine is unforgiveness. So we mentioned tithe, we mentioned stealing, we mentioned um, also accursed objects, we mentioned anti-Semitism, we mentioned uh, unnatural illicit sex, we mentioned injustice to the weak, we mentioned disrespect for parents and we mentioned the cult and then we're coming to an end and then we're going to pray in just a moment. Unforgiveness, bitterness. Um, when you allow unforgiveness due to some things maybe happening in your life, next thing begins to happen my friend is that you open the door to accursed in your life you open the door to a demonic torments in your life. I'm going to read the verse Matthew 18 34 it says, and his master was angry and delivered him to torturers until he should pay all that was due to him. Have you noticed that the master did not deliver him from the torturers, he delivered him to the torturers. You know I preached a message about three types of deliverances. The first one is when God delivers you to the devil and it shocked a lot of people and I read so many verses in the Bible where God says God delivered them, God delivered them, God delivered them to a debased mind, God delivered them to uncleanness, God delivered them to this, God delivered them and Paul even says, he says, I delivered this person to a demon, to a devil for the destruction of their flesh and you're like, what? I only thought God delivers me from the devil but God can actually deliver you to the devil. Mm -hmm. The Bible says the king delivered him to the torturers. Why? because that's what happens when you harbor unforgiveness. You have a right to be bitter. But if you do have a right to be bitter, devil has a right to bind you with the curse. He puts you in the prison and then torturers begin to torment you with your thoughts, with nightmares, even with sicknesses. People begin to have problems with their back, with their spine, uh, with their joints when they allow unforgiveness. It's like setting yourself on fire, hoping that the person next to you will burn. My friend, it destroys you, it burns you and you have to release unforgiveness. You have to release what people have done to you. Maybe they abused you, maybe they betrayed you, maybe uh, they have dropped you, dumped you, cheated on you and as hard as it is, you have to release that because when you are forgiving somebody, you're setting the prisoner free and then you're going to recognize the prisoner was actually you. It wasn't them. You may say, but what about them? Does that mean that uh, if I forgive, that means that, you know, what they're doing, you know, is right or I'm letting them off the hook. No, 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 my friend. Nobody's letting nobody off the hook. When Jesus forgave the Pharisees, He wasn't letting them off the hook. And people say sometimes, well, Vlad, I can't forgive. I will forgive when they apologize. Jesus did not wait for Pharisees to apologize before He forgave them on the cross. He forgave them. He says, Father, they do not know what they're doing. If you want God's blessing upon your life, live a life of forgiveness. 
if you are in ministry, if you are in church, if you are in a relationship, if you are in anything that has to do with people, you will get hurt. Even our Lord Jesus Christ has scars. You will have scars. Scars are good. Wounds are bad. Wounds say, I've been hurt. Scars say, I've been healed. Wounds say, oh, look what they did to me. Scars say, look how God redeemed it. Wounds, if they're not taken care of, if they're neglected, they become infected. And demons use the abuse, they use the neglect, they use the abandonment, they use the betrayal, and they use that to put you in the cage of spiritual curse. Where there's a black cloud that begins to follow you. And then after that, every relationship you get into is exactly like the previous one and you become a victim. Then you begin to think like a victim. You begin to attract losers. You begin to literally just from one broken relationship to another broken relationship. And you're looking and you're like, man, it's not only with me. It's what happened with my parents. It's what happened with my grandparents. And God wants to break the curse of relationship failure. And He wants to release you from that curse and give you a blessing in Jesus' name. There's more open doors, which we won't talk about right now. But if you guys are receiving something and um, I want you to let me know. We're about to pray drop the prayer emoji we're about to pray in just a moment and so we're about to pray in just a moment in Jesus mighty name I see a lot of you on YouTube and on Facebook before we pray a prayer of breaking curses I want to first and foremost pray right now a prayer of salvation there are people today who are not saved maybe you're watching me today and you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior I want to lead you in a prayer. We're going to pray for healing in just a moment. I really believe healings will break out today as it happened last week. People were healed last week. I got testimonies the week after that where people's feet were hurt, uh, were healed. People's backs were healed. Other people who had different pain in their body were healed and the same thing will happen today. The anointing of God is going to move today to heal the sick. But before we pray for the sick, I would like to give you an opportunity. If you are watching right now and you are involved in witchcraft, you are involved with crystal balls, you, you are involved, you are one way in God but another way you are practicing the things of the kingdom of darkness. Maybe you are living in sin, you are a backslid Christian. I would like to give you an opportunity to get saved right now. I would like to give you an opportunity to come back to Jesus right now. Repent of your sin, place your trust in Jesus. I don't have to say anymore, your heart already condemns you. The Spirit of God convicts you. He wants to resurrect you right now and He wants to make you new. You may not have a local church to attend to. You can make this a local church, Hungry Gen, a local church on Sunday and attend straight from your home until church is reopened. But God wants to save you right now. If you are ready to be saved, if you are ready to pray a prayer of salvation right now, I want you to just say this with me. And then I'm going to have our moderators also type out this prayer so that you can read it out loud in the comments. Say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, I am a sinner. Please forgive me of all my sin and wash me with your precious blood. I believe you are the Son of God who died on the cross for all my sin. I receive your gift of salvation. Come and live in my heart and make me new, make me yours, in Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray that prayer, I want you to let us know. Go to hungrygen.com slash VIP. If our precious mods, if we can drop that right now, and hungrygen.com slash VIP. I want you to let us know. Say, hey, I pray that prayer. I'm coming back to Christ so we can get connected to you so we can bring you into the church so that we can get you connected into the local church online or personally on whatever you're watching. Amen. In Jesus mighty name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you Lord. We praise you Father. We praise you Lord. We thank you Lord. Right now let's begin to get ready to pray for deliverance. I've seen a lot of you um, mentioning also uh, that you need deliverance. If you need deliverance specifically from the power of witchcraft, from the curses of abortion, maybe curses of the things that you did with stealing, um, 
we're gonna pray right now that God's gonna begin to break those curses. There are some of you you're watching right now and you actually have objects in your own home and as I was speaking God start bringing those things to your mind and you're gonna throw them away. You're gonna burn those things. You're gonna destroy those things but there are curses attached to that that we're gonna be breaking today by the power of the name of Jesus. Donna thank you for dropping the link on Facebook. We're gonna be breaking those things in the name of Jesus. Some of you will feel the anointing coming upon you. Some of you will actually might even feel like throwing up or something of that sort and it's and some of you will feel fire. Some of you will feel absolutely nothing but you'll just know something is changing. Something is happening in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's welcome the Holy Spirit. And let me just right now begin to pray um, for that. If you say, I need that prayer for deliverance, go ahead and just drop that in the comments. Say, count me in that prayer of deliverance. Go ahead and just comment that right now below. I see people saying, I need prayer. Uh, Lily from Australia, I think from Australia. She says, I need a prayer for deliverance and healing for my health. So just deliverance from my home. In Jesus' name, go ahead and just drop that right now. We're going to be praying in just a second. Spirit of God, I thank you that your presence is here. Spirit of God, I thank you that your presence is here. As people are repenting in the comment, as they're repenting of the theft, as they are repenting of the crystals, as they are going to be removing things in the name of Jesus, as they are repenting of witchcraft, as they are repenting of stealing God, as they are repenting Lord God right now Father of, of things that are not pleasing to you Lord. I pray that your precious blood will wash them right now in the name of Jesus. Spirit of the living God, wash them right now in the blood of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, in the name of Jesus, wash the sins of abortion, wash the sins of theft, wash the sins of witchcraft, wash the sins of injustice to the poor, wash the sins right now Lord God in the name of Jesus, of disrespect toward their parents, wash the sins of stubbornness God toward the authority. Father in the name of Jesus Christ I pray right now that you will wash with the precious blood of Jesus. Spirit of the living God, I feel your presence even as I'm praying right now. I pray that the washing of the blood of Jesus, all the sexual immorality, lesbianism, homosexuality, the acts that were involved, I pray that you will wash with the blood. All the dirt and all the sin in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. The people who maybe even withheld their tithe and they're noticing a calamity right now, God, and that that greed stepped in, that you will wash from every greed, Lord. Wash from every bitterness. Wash from every offense. Wash from complaining in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's begin to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the precious blood of Jesus has washed your people. And right now I come against every curse of witchcraft in Jesus' mighty name. I command that devil to lift that curse right now in Jesus name. I break that curse of witchcraft. I break that curse of sorcery. I break that curse right now that came through horoscopes. I break that curse that came through crystals in Jesus mighty name. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Fire of the Holy Ghost right now on that curse. Let that dark shadow, let that chain that is binding those people right now be loosed in Jesus mighty name. Be loosed in Jesus mighty name. I break that spiritual glass right now over your life by the fire of the Holy Ghost. By the name of Jesus Christ, let it be broken in Jesus' name. Be broken in Jesus' mighty name. Be broken in Jesus' mighty name. Let that fig tree dry up by its roots right now in the name of Jesus. Every curse that the enemy has placed, every curse that the sin has been released through abortion, or through illicit sex, or through disrespect of parents, or through witchcraft, or through stealing, or through any other means, we break it in Jesus' mighty name. I break it in Jesus' mighty name. Go ahead and just type in the comment right now. Let's begin to say, I break that curse in Jesus' name. Come on right now, just agree with me. Say, I break that curse in Jesus' name. As though you're repeating with me, you're just simply typing it out. Say, I break that curse in the mighty name of Jesus. I break that curse of poverty in the name of Jesus. I break that curse of rejection in the name of Jesus. I break that curse of witchcraft in Jesus' mighty name. I break that curse over my children in Jesus' mighty name. I break that curse of barrenness in the mighty name of Jesus. I break that curse on the mind in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let that curse be broken in Jesus' mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Christ 
In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we break that curse. We break that curse. We are agreeing right now with every comment in the name of Jesus. I agree as they are typing it, as I'm declaring it. The distance is not a barrier for the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ, the chains are being broken right now in the name of Jesus. The chains are being broken in the name of Jesus. I break that curse in the mighty name of the Lord. I break every demonic curse right now in the mighty name of the Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Let it be broken in Jesus' mighty name. Let it be broken in Jesus' mighty name. Every trap of the devil, every demonic activity, every rejection, every poverty, every witchcraft be broken in Jesus' name. Every curse that came through the objects, Every curse on relationships be broken in Jesus' mighty name. Going from a boyfriend to a boyfriend in Jesus' name. Every curse of abuse be broken in Jesus' mighty name. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. Be free in Jesus' name. Be free from that curse in Jesus' mighty name. Be free in Jesus' mighty name. You and your family. You and your family. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are moving right now. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are moving right now. We thank you that you are moving right now, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. I'm going to pray as well right now for those who are sick. In the name of Jesus. If you are sick in your stomach, if you are sick right now in your joints, in Jesus' name, that is healing that is there for you in just a moment. So we're ready to pray for healing right now. As you prayed for me last night, so this is testimony from last, last week, I felt kabod of the Holy Spirit right there when I began to pray and speak in my heavenly language. I wanted to be healed and I believed that I could be seen in my body and mind. Um, you prayed for the fungus of the feet. I had an itch in between one of my toes for a few weeks. I woke up this morning and it was gone. I also had a swelling of the gums under one of my teeth for two weeks. I woke up this morning. It was gone too. Come on somebody, praise God. And so I praise God for you guys and for your labor and etc. Other person said, I had a massive hip pain. So this was last week. I had a massive hip pain the whole day. And then the moment prayer was offered, I was totally healed. A uh, person who was, was saying, please do more streams, is that I felt pain lift off of my legs. Another person who, had a, who was healed physically. So right now something is about, I really believe, we're going to begin to pray that the Lord is going to, um, the Lord is going to bring healing. I really sense the freedom has been released. But the Spirit of God is going to bring healing right now to people that are sick. All I'm asking you is that you place your hand upon the part of the body where there is pain. If you are sick, Place your hand. If you have COVID and you are in your house, place your hand right now on your lungs. Place your hand upon your joints, on your neck. Um, if you have a problem with um, maybe spasms or you have asthma or something else. If you have children that are sick right now, place your hand upon them right in front of this stream. God can do the impossible. All we got to do is release our faith in Jesus' name. The Spirit of God is about to move. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Lord, I ask you for your healing to come right now. I rebuke every spirit of infirmity. I rebuke every curse of disease upon the bodies of your people in Jesus' name. I rebuke that pain in the knee. I rebuke right now the autoimmune system. I rebuke right now asthma in the name of Jesus. Be healed in Jesus' name. Every growth, every mass, every tumor, every cancerous cell be burned by the fire of the Holy Spirit right now in the name of Jesus. Every arthritis in the joints be burned by the fire of the Holy Spirit right now. Every gastritis, every digestive problem, be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in the name of Jesus. I speak healing to the lower back. I speak healing right now to ear infections. I speak healing right now in the name of Jesus Christ to the gums in the teeth, the gums in the mouth that bring this, this pain. Be healed in Jesus' name. 
be restored right now in the mighty name of the Lord. In the mighty name of the Lord. Every plug in the ears, let your ears open right now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke every diabetes. I rebuke high blood pressure. I rebuke fibroids right now in the name of Jesus. Every cyst, let it be surgically, supernaturally cut off and, and removed in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. In the name of Jesus. Every problem with skin, skin infection, eczema, or all kinds of itching, in the name of Jesus Christ, be healed in your skin right now. In Jesus' name. Be restored in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lower back pain. Go in Jesus' name. Be restored and be healed in Jesus' name. I rebuke every seizure. I rebuke bipolar. I rebuke personality disorder. I rebuke right now multiple personality disorder. I rebuke right now every, every single trauma that has caused you not to sleep at night. Nightmares and intrusive thoughts in the name of Jesus Christ. Be freed in Jesus' name. Be delivered in the name of the Lord. Through the Holy Spirit's fire. The name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you that you're restoring right now. Hips, you're restoring right now. Blood, I thank you that you're restoring lungs, kidneys. I thank you that you're restoring our eyes, our ears, our skin. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Receive that. Just, just begin to receive that. Come on, just comment below right now. Say, I receive. I receive. Go ahead. Just drop that. I receive in Jesus' name. Say, Lord, I receive your prayer. I receive a prayer from your servant. Lord, I receive the prayer of faith right now in the name of the Lord. I receive my healing. I receive my breakthrough. If you're noticing that changes begin to happen, just let us know right away so we can share. I know that healings are, healings are taking place. I know the Lord is going to be healing even after this stream. And so go ahead and just drop it in the comments. Say, hey, I receive in the name of Jesus. And then as we're going to drop a link right now called uh, hungrygen.com slash testimony. The moment your healing begins to manifest, make sure you share it. Because one of the best ways to see that those healings happen to other people, make sure that you share your healing testimony with others in the name of Jesus. Come on, come on. I receive, I receive, I receive, I receive, I receive my breakthrough. I receive my healing. I receive my freedom. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name. So go ahead and just begin to drop that. If you're beginning to notice there's a healing that's manifesting, exercise Valentina Prokopenko. God bless you. Good to see you here on Facebook. And... Um, and so go ahead and just begin to drop it in the comment below. Say, hey, I, I, if you notice something changing, let us know in the comment and let us know through the testimony as well. We just want to celebrate. We just want to, uh, it will encourage our faith. We know I don't need to see another testimony to know that God is the healer and God knows, but it does build other people's faith and it glorifies His name. We overcame the devil by the power of our testimony in Jesus' name. Um, now we've come to a time where I just wanted to ask for those of you guys who are uh, part of this to um, to give toward um, the work of the Lord. What started to happen is that we give all of our content for free, our school, uh, all of our ebooks, um, all of the books, they can be downloaded digitally online and a lot of people download them. We also started to bring people on a staff for Vladimir Subject Ministries so that we can help to create content in the last two, three weeks on YouTube started to explode. So many people are now getting the content and, and so all of that takes a lot of, of resources. So I really want to encourage you. I know that my uh, my friend Isaiah says, don't, uh, how, do, how does he say? Don't dash and, don't dine and dash. Don't dine and dash. See, I'm still learning. Don't dine and dash. And so I want you to also sow where you want to grow as a Christian. The Bible says that those who sow into the Spirit will reap from the Spirit. Um, and so I want to encourage you to do that. I want to encourage you to give today. Uh, the best thing that you can do is honestly partner with the work of the Holy Spirit. Take next 12 months. For those of you who are partners with Netflix, partners with Hulu, partners with um, ESPN, you're partners with all of these things and you're realizing, man, I want to grow in God, but I'm partnering with all of these worldly things. What if you would take next 12 months and you will sow where you want to grow with two things with your time i'm assuming because you're watching right now you're already sowing your time I appreciate you doing that your spirit is going to grow through that so sow your time and then sow your finances instead of partnering with 
um, with Hollywood instead of partnering with Disney, instead of partnering with, with those things, partner with the ministry so that you can grow where you sow in Jesus mighty name. Thank you guys so much and I'm just going to read off just a few donations uh, that came in today. Maria, thank you. Chad, Brianna, Regina, Vitaly, Vladimir, Jeff, Mark, Joshua. Uh, God bless you. Maria, uh, Thomas, Mitzi, Lori, Monica, Michelle, Terrence, Ruth, Alyssa, Margarita, uh, Rahel, Janice, Tonya, Catherine, Brenda, Melanie, Donna, Thank you so much for responding to the call. May God bless you. And so um, I don't support them. Wow, great point. Glad I don't support them. Uh, yes, Stephanie, a lot of people, you know, they, they say things like, uh, man, I want to grow in God. But, you know, you're asking all their subscriptions and they're, they're subscribed financially to like all of these things. And so they're not sowing in the things of God, but they want to grow. This is what you have to know about sowing and reaping is this, is that you will, you will reap where you sow you will reap after you sow, you will always reap more than you sow, and you will reap what you sow. And so sow where you want to grow. That's my thing. Um, come on somebody, my lungs are filling easily, asthma is broken in Jesus' name. Wow, Tacos said, thank you Pastor Vlad for today's live. Um, amen, 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 amen. If you guys have any questions, I'm just going to stay for about a minute or two and answer any questions. We'll be back again. Karen, thank you for your donation. We'll be back again next Thursday, every Thursday, 6 o'clock. Every Thursday, 6 o'clock, um, we're going to stay here. Um, I'm going to still talk about curses for a few more weeks. Next week, I'm going to deal with generational curses and what are the signs, seven signs of curses, and then uh, seven signs of generational curses, and then we're going to deal with generational curses, and then we're going to do one more stream about uh, 10 ways to break curses in your life. I received healing from unforgiveness. Come on, praise God. Um, amen. Uh, thank you for this edifying life. We love tacos. Come on, somebody. My lungs are feeling better. Fedor, praise God. I'm healed instantly from a three days chest pain. God really healed. I'm from Philippines. Come on somebody. Amen. Donna, so where you want to grow. That's right. And I saw Maria gave through stars on Facebook. Um, thank you, Maria. God bless you. I don't know how that works though. I know the Facebook eats uh, some portions, so it's best to do it through uh, through our website. But God bless you. We love you, Pastor Vlad Hungry Jen. Thank you. Please talk about monitoring experience via eating in dreams. Thank you for that suggestion. Every time I get on your lives, wants to ask me questions or make so much noise. Devil is a liar. I'm hungry for Jesus. I need to talk to my parents. Come on. God makes all things new. That's right. Tithe before or after taxes. Um, so I tithe 10% uh, out of what I receive, but you, you, can, you can do either or. Uh, you can do either or. Um, uh, so either or. But it, it's, it's always good to do a full full before uh, taxes but even if you do after taxes it's fine me and my husband continue to see snakes in dreams it is a curse how to be freed it's a demonic attack um, it's a demonic attack when you see snakes in the dream uh, husband and wife having sex any restrictions okay we'll do another probably for different uh we're gonna deal with that um, but not today uh, come and preach at revival culture um, I have to go, Pastor Vlad. I love your ministry. Thank you so much, Nathaniel. Uh, hey guys, please continue to pray for my deliverance ahead. Uh, can video games bring a curse and sleeplessness? Uh, sleeplessness, yeah. Uh, video games, yes. Video games can open also uh, an open door or even movies as well and stuff. So, but video games is just not wise to spend uh, time playing. Uh, I'm not overall against games or sports and stuff and so, but there are some video games that are very, very dark and, uh, and they're also very addictive and stuff. So when will you be at FFM again? Uh, very soon, very soon. I am coming to, so uh, guys, I'm coming to Atlanta this Saturday. This Saturday, I'm going to be in Atlanta on Saturday night. I'm going to speak in New Life Church. Let's drop the link right now on where I'm going to be at. And then on Sunday morning, I'm going to speak at the church in Russian. And then Sunday night, I'm going to be with my friend Miles from Worship with Wonders Church in Atlanta. So if you're nearby, come on out. I mean, we would love to have you there and stuff. And so, uh, Pastor Vlad, what, would I, what should I do? My parents have both gone with the Lord. I'm 35 now and married, have been rebellious with my parents. I think God sees your repentance and then just honor other people in your life like your pastor or people that are honestly your mentors right now. What do you think about Christian rap? I think it's good. I don't, I don't listen to Christian rap, but uh, 
pretty sure. Johannan, I see you. Finally, I see a comment from you, bro. Really? Come on, man. Pastor Ilya, are you here as well? Uh, yes. Uh, can I cast out demons, heal the sick, and raise the dead if I haven't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Uh, Roland, um, uh, usually, usually, usually people that I know who do this kind of ministry are the ones who receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and stuff. And so that's why Jesus gives us the baptism of the Holy Spirit so that to give us power to be witnesses. And so uh, can you do it? I mean, try it. But I would encourage you to get baptized, baptized in the Holy Spirit because that's really what the purpose of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is to empower you for the ministry. It's more than just being speaking in tongues. Uh, when will you be in Northeast? What is Northeast? Where is that at? Yeah. Ah, okay, um, that area. So we, we don't have any... Um, I think I'm going to be in... in um, uh, I don't, not Idaho, um, Ohio in august for now and as far as i know i'm going to be in the uk in july i felt such a deliverance last week from your prayer thank you so much tacos god bless you enchanted soul uh god bless you does demonic uh attack prevent pregnancy uh yes it can yes it can um come on come on amen 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 watching from singapore god bless you have you come have you been to texas no i have not been i've been to texas but not to preach I love me Texas, come on. But I, I uh, would love to go one day to Texas. Watching from Jamaica, I woke up after, what could it mean? Um, how do you pray for a husband to be delivered from adultery? Um, well, you probably need to uh, um, see a marriage counselor, number one, for that. But if he keeps committing adultery, uh, he, need, he needs deliverance. Um, he needs deliverance. We're in UK. It's going to be in London. I have an addiction of smoking and uh, meds. I feel like I haven't have a full relationship with the Holy Spirit until I quit, but I can't seem to quit without the help of the Holy Spirit. What can I do? You need deliverance, Tiffany, number one. And number two is that you also need to ask the Holy Spirit. Um, it's true, you actually described exactly, you, don't, you can't get delivered without the Holy Spirit and you can't um, get um, Holy Spirit, more of the Holy Spirit without, uh, without deliverance. Um, and so we're going to talk more about that as the weeks come by. Actually, my wife has just uh, corrected me that I was actually in Texas preaching at John Hagee's church. And so, um, amen. So Karen, thank you for your donation. Tiffany, Fedor, Sara, Lordy, Lordy, thank you for your generous gift. Wow. Adam, Pamela, Yahira, Joseph, Jeruz, uh, J uh, Zerubbabel. Come on, that's a Bible name right there. Mitzi, Philip, and then Alma. And so we're going to let you guys go right now. And... Um, we're going to come back again and um, talk again next week, break it down a little bit more. You know, I'm building a uh, relationship with you guys. I'm also building a uh, consistency with this. I already have, you know, kind of the ideas planned of what we're going to do um, each Thursday. And so I'm committed to this. I'm going to ask you that you guys commit to that. Could you do me a huge, huge favor right now? Could you go and sign up for the email updates? email of this pastorvlad.org slash email and click that Thursday stream which you will get an email on Wednesday it's me right now actually creating those emails um, and so you'll get an email on Wednesday a reminder to tune in on Thursday and what the topic will be and so because of algorithm and because the this these platforms are so unpredictable I want to stay connected with you and I want you to stay connected with us instead of you know things being wiped out where one day I get censored and that's it I lose everything and stuff so I don't want to depend on YouTube or Facebook I want you to connect with me um, and so go ahead and we, we drop the email um, and that would really really mean a lot uh, we also have a prayer request if we can drop right now the link for prayer request and this is not just where you submit the prayer request and nobody actually reads them and prays for them we actually pray for your prayer request like like seriously pray okay and so uh so submit your prayer request more we really want to be able to be praying for you and in jesus mighty name amen Everett just dropped that thank you will you come to minnesota i was in minnesota not long ago um but um, don't have any plans yet. I was baptized in the bathtub. That's right. Been done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. God bless you. And uh, Myra, thank you so much. Tanya, thank you for your donation. And then Myra, thank you for your donation. Really, really appreciate you guys. And so good night, every each one of you. And we'll see you again next Thursday um, on... Um, is this Ezekiel Vasquez? Vasquez? Is this uh, our intern?
bro, we gotta make him a mod, man. Yeah, yeah and so is Joe. That's right. Okay, I'm gonna go eat because on Thursdays I usually uh, take time to fast so that I don't. I do this very seriously. I prepare for it, so I'm gonna go get a, a quick bite and then we're gonna clean up this uh, stream and re-upload it. And so, um, thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful, wonderful night or day wherever you're watching.